Welcome to the Sigma MPL software video overview. In this video, we will explore some of the basic file playback features found in the latest version of the software. When you open a group of .mpl files using Sigma MPL, your home screen should look something like this. Let's take a second to familiarize ourselves with the different partitions within this screen. An individual data set, or profile, appears as a line graph here in the center top portion of the window. This graph displays the photon counts received by the detector in relation to the distance each backscattered photon traveled before being reflected. The green line shows the copolarized return, and the red line shows the cross-polarized return. Adjusting these graphs is easy and intuitive, as there are access controls here in the lower left corner. You can also drag across an area of the graph to zoom in and right-click to return. Since most of the time you'll be interested in opening more than one profile at once, all of the profiles are simultaneously displayed in these two time-dependent graphs here. The top one displays copolarized return, and the bottom displays cross-polarized return. Notice that the x-axis shows the time, the y-axis now shows the distance, and the count rate, which was shown over here in the first graph, is now conveyed via a false color plot. The color scale on the plot can be easily changed to make the particular events you are interested in more vivid. Since the first graph only shows one profile, we denote where this observed profile fits into our data by these red lines here. You can use the scroll bar to move through the data and observe different profiles. Over on the left-hand side of the screen, you'll notice some additional information about the profile you're viewing, including the background counts, laser energy, and the temperatures of the telescope, detector, and laser head. Raw data received from a LIDAR needs further processing to become easily readable. Much of this intensive post-processing is now done within the Sigma MPL software itself, so researchers can focus more time on using data rather than trying to read it. Sigma MPL organizes processed data in tabs, so it's easy to compare different levels of processing. Let's look at a couple of these tabs. First, there's the R-squared corrected tab. This data is corrected for the 1 over R-squared factor in the LIDAR equation, and gives you a much more accurate description of backscatters at different altitudes. The particular group of data we're looking at here was taken over the period of one night, and in these graphs we can start to see how clouds and aerosols have moved over time. The next step in post-processing is what we call the NRB, or Normalized Relative Backscatter tab. In these graphs, we have compensated for several other calibrations, including the afterpulse, overlap, and dead time factors inherent in all LIDAR systems. Notice also that this graph adjusts itself to minor fluctuations in laser energy. Now that the data has been calibrated to this level, we can start to describe the actual altitudes of clouds and aerosol layers. We use distinct markers to label these features on the graphs. Here we can label the base, peak, and top of clouds, the planetary boundary layer, and the top aerosol layer. The theories and equations used for these calculations can be tweaked in the calibration window here. Sigma MPL now also comes with an SNR, or signal to noise ratio tab. Here, scientists and researchers can quantify the quality of the data they're using and monitor the effects that outside noise is having on the instrument. The easiest way to use the SNR tab is to set the maximum value of the false color plot to your preferred SNR threshold. For instance, if you are only interested in data that exceeds an SNR of 10, set the maximum value to 10. Now, every data point where the signal is 10 times stronger than the noise will appear white. Notice how the SNR approves once solar radiation lessens at sunset and in situations where dense objects like clouds provide strong returns. Other typical values used by researchers are 1 and 100. The last tab we will mention in this video is the housekeeping tab. Here, we can watch how the laser energy, temperatures, and background counts change over time. Notice how the sunset and sunrise are clearly visible in the background graph. Remember, Sigma MPL already compensates for both background and laser energy in its data processing, so there's no need to adjust your interpretation of the data based on anything you see here. Thanks for watching the Sigma MPL software overview. We hope that this brief introduction has given you a good idea of just how easy and powerful our software has become.